morning all i hope everyone's well uh, welcome to the the webinar this morning and we're going to talk about enabling transformation um, through the use of sd wan um so if i can introduce myself so i'm chris fletcher i'm head of direct sales within nastar and i've got responsibility for the teams that manage all of our current customers and also our, our prospective business development team and i'm joined by a, a colleague and a, and a partner from fortinet paolo can i introduce yourself Hi, yes. Uh, good morning. I'm Paolo Rodriguez. I'm a senior solutions architect in Fortinet's business development team here in the UK and covering Ireland as well. Thanks, Paolo. So this morning, um, we're going to talk to you about uh, Fortinet. We're going to talk to you about uh, Nastar, and then we're going to delve into the world of, of SD WAN, looking at it from a, a business transformation and also from a, a technical element as well and how the approach of Nastar working with Fortinet can deliver against business transformation. And then we've got time at the end for some questions. So just from a bit of housekeeping, so everybody is currently on, on mute at the moment. Um, we are going to record this webinar, or sorry, we are recording this webinar, and it will be circulated after for people that are on the call and for those that choose to uh, receive it afterwards. If you have got any questions, if you put those in the chat, then what we will do is we'll pick them up at the end of this. We won't answer them during the during the uh, the broadcast, but we will pick them up at the end. And I hope that works for everybody. So, who are Nastar? So, so we are one of the, uh, the UK's largest cl cloud providers. Okay, we've got great capability in the world of Microsoft and AWS, and we're well qualified within that piece. And that really allows us to take and work with our customers on that cloud transformation journey. And that's underpinned by, by two things, really. First and foremost, it's our, our wide portfolio. And we're going to talk to you today about SD-WAN as being one of those key components. But furthermore, and most importantly, it's about the people that work within our organisation. And as you can see, we've got more than 500 technical people and it's their role to translate the, tran the, the, the transformation challenges into a technical solution that, and deliver that. So based upon each of those, we're a great partner to work with. And we've built up our, our partnership mechanism through our 25 years of experience. So we've been working within this industry amongst a number of acquisitions and growths to develop a framework in which we can work with our customers. And that's built upon the world of consulting so we can understand what the challenges are within each business. We can then work upon a modernization program where we can look to understand and build a plan that meets those objectives. And then furthermore, how we manage through that process in delivering and the in-life management of that. And we're going to talk a little bit about an example of that later in the presentation and bring to life exactly what our approach was working with uh, Fortinet and delivering against this. So before we get into the world of technology, probably want to share um, a couple of elements that might resonate with you in which we're seeing within the marketplace at the moment by way of transformational drivers. So firstly, the pace of digi digital acceleration. As we've come out of the world of COVID, we're seeing the pace of change within organisations to be greater than ever. And the speed to the cloud has been, been heightened by a number of things. Also on the back of COVID, you've got the world of hybrid working. And that's a demand from both employers and employees in which that they want to work anywhere and have that same in-office experience. But underpinning all this change is the world of security. And it's really, really important that within the world which have changed with the world of transformation that there is an element of security there particularly within certain industries that really demand that and then finally but most importantly it's about the world of people and while transformation might change you know greater efficiencies and greater flexibility what we're seeing coming out of this is the world of well-being and by that what i mean is is that by giving people the right tools by giving them the right flexibility it's supporting their well-being within the workplace. And whilst that might be overlooked, a number of organisations are really seeing that. So what does that mean? Well, you know, transformation just doesn't happen on its own. It's got to have a set of enablers. And one of the things that we're seeing is SD-WAN is being that real business enabler. 
So as organisations move to the world of SD-WAN, they're just not seeing that as a change for their from their current network connectivity. It's not just a change for change sake, and it's not just a reason to do something different because it's the latest and greatest buzzword. And it's not just driven by IT. It's driven by a set of business challenges and, uh, and, and a set of outcomes that need to be addressed in order to get there. And from us as an organisation, you know, we've chosen to work with, with Fortinet um, and we've been working with Fortinet for a number of years. And the reason that we've chosen to work with Fortinet is about the, the inherent security as part of the, the network fabric. Um, Paolo is going to talk to you about that in, in greater detail, but for us, it is our partner with choice for, for SD-WAN. And what I want to do now is, is pass on to, to Paolo, who's going to talk to you a bit more about the, the Fortinet portfolio, the technology and the security. So if I can pass across to yourself, Paolo. Thank you, Chris. So um, I can never assume that everyone in an audience knows who Fortinet is. Some of you are probably thinking 40 who? Others of you are probably thinking Fortinet, aren't those those guys that make those really cool high performance firewalls? And to the latter, I would say, yes, you are correct. However, as Chris alluded, we don't just do high performance firewalls. We have an entire product portfolio that enables customers to build secure networks as opposed to networks with security. But if I was to just focus on what we call the FortiGate, so the FortiGate is our is our core security platform, but it is not a firewall. It is a multifunctional security platform that is bristling with a plethora of features, one of which is the topic of today, which is SD-WAN. And it's important to note here that the SD-WAN on our platform it has no incremental cost. You know, when you pr procure the FortiGate uh, security platform, the SD-WAN is built in. It is no charges, so it can be, for all intents and purposes, be deemed to be a free feature on the platform. It's not bound to any creative licensing, um, and it will continue to work even if, say, your procurement department forgets to pay our, uh, our license, uh, yearly license uh, maintenance fee or whatever it will not stop working. We don't do that to customers, right? It will continue to work no matter what. So you could ask yourself, well, if it's free, how good could it possibly be? Well, looking at the Gartner Magic Quadrant here, they think very, very good indeed. So if you look, we are in the top right-hand quadrant, firmly there. And we're also number one in all the three subcategories of what Gartner call the WAN Edge infrastructure. So that's what uh, Gartner refers to SD-WAN as, WAN Edge infrastructure, right? Can I have the next slide? Chris? Yeah, sorry, it just won't move on. Uh, let me try that again. It just wants you all to really study the slide and take away the <laughs> immense greatness of Fortinet in, in Gartner's eyes. While, whilst we're waiting for that slide to move on, it's important to note, you may see that it says 2021, but that's because this report came out on the 20th of September 21, right? So the 22 one hasn't been released yet. So as it stands right now, that is still current. Now, if we look at the trends of, uh, you know, what is driving the adoption of um, SD-WAN, if we consider the old fashioned way where we had people sitting behind a laptop, sitting in an office, you know, consuming applications in a in a data center. That that, you know, that is no longer the case anymore, as Chris correctly said, you know, NASCAR are a, are a, a specialist in, in cloud based services. More and more organizations are moving to the cloud. So. The old fashioned way of delivering WAN networking is simply not fit for purpose. It, it, it's suboptimal to have traffic go from your branch offices over a carrier's network. So for those of you who aren't technical, MPLS means multi-protocol label switching, and it's a way of uh, carriers historically used to um, deliver a VPN type services to customers, right? So to have your traffic traverse those MPLX clouds to terminate either in your own data centers or the most typically the carrier pops where your data centers were often co-located, then break out to the cloud just adds unnecessary hops and latency to applications, right? And additionally, say even if you did have backup paths historically, 
there would be no intelligent way of actually steering traffic across those multiple paths. So often your, your backup path would be sitting there, you, you would be paying for it, but you'd be getting no return on investment. The other thing is that these services were very, very inflexible and had very long mean times to repair. And by that, I mean that if something went wrong, if if you started noticing uh, you know, performance degradation, then you'd have to uh, typically phone up the carrier and say, hey, there's something wrong. But then the problem is, well, where did that problem lie? It wasn't in the, the last mile tail between your office and the carrier's pop. Was it within the carrier's own network? Or, you know, maybe within their, their own uh, underlying uh, network infrastructure, the, the, the physical links, or was it within their actual routers or, or gateways or switches within their network? So as you can see, right, it, it, it could potentially take a long time to restore those. And in the modern world, that's just not fit for purpose. Chris, can I have the next slide? like to play games today. There we go. So what SD-WAN allows you to do is certainly on our appliances, procure as many, what I would like to call commodity-based circuits. I mean, if you think about it, I I'm working from home as I'm sure Chris is as well. I've got a hundred megabit per second link to my house. Now, you know, when I started in IT, I was uh, delivering something called multi-drop uh, circuits to customers, which were around 600 board between mainframes. Um, and, you know, now we've got speeds coming to even home offices, which equal those what used to be considered normal within a campus switching environment. The real thing is that, that they are compared to the traditional MPLS circuits, really, really cheap, right? Cost effective, maybe a better word. But on our appliance, you can take as many of those as you want. Typically, a customer will have two circuits. Let's call them VDSL circuits. And then they may augment those for resilience with an extra two, maybe LTE, 5G, 4G, 5G circuits. Now, what SD-WAN is able to do is to look at the quality of those links. It looks at the packet loss, the, the jitter, the latency of those links. It then identifies applications. It identifies them accurately, right? So you can see that we've got our platforms, again, because of the legacy of it being in what is often called a next generation firewall, it is a true layer seven device. So it is able to go all the way up to layer seven and identify what those applications really are. And then apply it's intelligence of the actual links or how well those links are performing to the correct application so that that application is steered along the path that optimizes it for the business requirements. Now here it's important to understand something that there are two fundamental ways that SD-WAN platforms can identify traffic. One is using something called the Internet Services Database, which is just a list of IP addresses associated with a specific cloud-based service. Now, you've got to consider this. You know, something. if I look at Office 365, for example, there are over 100,000 IP addresses associated just with that one service. How do you know, or how could you possibly know if any one of those 100,000 IP addresses has been compromised, has suffered something like a, you know, sorry, can you go back? Yeah, um, has suffered a, 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 a IP spoofing attack or a, DNI, a DNS redirect attack, you couldn't. It's like, it's like if, for those of you that are old enough to remember old phone books, right? You look up a company's uh, phone number in the old phone book, you dial it, you've no way of knowing whether that company still exists or the person answering the phone at the other end is genuinely part of that company and it's giving you the correct information. So that is the way many of our competitors rely on to, in order to find what we call application identification. We don't just rely on that. We do use that. But again, we use our full layer seven intelligence that when that traffic starts flowing down that link, we look deep into the layer seven and we make sure that that traffic coming down the line is genuinely Office 365 or, you know, whatever the application is, uh, Salesforce, etc. And the other thing is you have to be able to strip off the SSL because you know the traffic is encrypted and we need to be able to do that at scale. Now, in a Fortinet appliance, we can do that at scale because 
we design and manufacture our own ASICs, application-specific integrated circuits, which give us an enormous amount of performance to be able to do that de-encryption, inspection, and re-encryption of traffic to ensure that one, the applications are what they say they are, and two, that there's no th hidden threats within that. And we are constantly learning new applications. It's dynamic. It's done through our 40 guard cloud. And the SD-WAN is also dynamically constantly looking at those links. And if a link goes down, it will automatically switch the traffic to the next most appropriate link for that traffic based on business criticality. But what's not on the slide is that we also provide dynamic quality of service because it's pointless. If you down, if you were on four links, you're down to one, you've got different applications with different business levels of criticality. Now you need to give them a different level of uh, quality of service on that given link so that the most important applications get a better crack at the whip. Chris, next slide. Now, the other thing to consider when adopting SD-WAN, sure, if you've got an existing infrastructure, say you've got existing firewalls, existing routers, of course you can go out and you can procure an SD-WAN platform and you, and you can shoehorn that in. But what you're doing by adopting a multi-vendor or retaining a multi-vendor strategy is you're simply adding complexity. And I don't know of any company that has limitless numbers of IT engineers and has absolutely open budgets when it comes to training those engineers, right? So you've got to be practical here. There's no ways that your IT staff can be 100% proficient on all those appliances. Now, also factor in that when you adopt SD-WAN, you've moved away from that historical MPLS VPN type service, which although it had no encryption, did give you an element of security by obscurity because it was a private VPN service. SD-WAN has got the major benefits that I've outlined, but you are now directly connected to the internet, which means that the internet is directly connected to you. So you're ex you've got a massively expanded threat surface. Now, whilst IT professionals have to play whack-a-mole trying to close all the security doors, the bad guys only got to find that one hole, that one misconfiguration that your IT team have erroneously done because for those reasons I outlined, they can't be specialists at all. And just like a circus juggler, the more balls you get them to juggle, the greater the chance that they're going to drop one. So it's got there the greater margin for human error. It's the increased operational overhead, which is also compounded by the cost. The more vendors, the more hardware, licensing, maintenance contracts and whatnot. And you've also got the finger pointing. Coming back to that mean time to repair argument that I said earlier, right? You phone up, there's a problem. You've got vendor A saying it's not us, it must be vendors B's problem. All of that, as I said, is increased operational overhead. And the other thing, and I mentioned it in my previous slide, 99.9% .9 of all internet traffic today is encrypted, all right? You have to be able to strip off that encryption and look in terms of what is coming down that line. Otherwise, all your SD-WAN is doing is potentially providing a high-speed transit for potential malicious stuff to enter your network. Chris, next slide. So how does Fortinet help you? Well. Simplification through consolidation, right? Take all those individual components and wrap them up into that one single, as I said, multifunctional security platform that does the firewalling. It does the SD-WAN. It does the routing. It's simple. With simplicity comes agility. It's easier to make ads, moves, and changes. And with that, it becomes far more cost effective. Chris, next slide. Now, we've spoken about SD-WAN from the perspective of the branch office, but we also mentioned that times have moved on. You know, Chris mentioned the, the dynamic that there are more and more people working from home. And of course, what's been happening across the globe in the last two years has simply amplified that dynamic. So I would love it if you bought a FortiGate for everyone's home's office, right? Because I get a lot more commission. But the reality is, is that's not going to happen. So you've got mobile users. How do you provide them a, a, a sort of a, a dedicated internet access so that their flow of traffic is as optimal as it could be if they're in the office? And we do that 
with our endpoint, our zero trust agent, which we call 40 client, right? So we have a, a SASE based service that can provide you ubiquitous global security. It's a single pane of glass orchestration, very simple dashboard. You can go on there, uh, you know, you can provision the 40 client, which is a very lightweight endpoint, but it also has full zero trust capability. So it establishes the security posture of the endpoint. It allows you to put security policies on the endpoint. And then the 40 SASE cloud protects that. It's scrubbing all that traffic. It's doing all the SSL deep inspection. It's making sure that there's no nasties coming down there. And it's then sending their traffic out to the cloud uh, resources in the most optimal way possible. But let's say, for example, that you have stuff in your private cloud, in your existing data center, or you know, some other SaaS service that you it's more optimal to send directly to that service versus going over our 40 SASE cloud. Well, that is where we're able to do this provisioning. Let's call it a lightweight endpoint SD-WAN capability. We were able to provision ZTNA tunnels directly from that endpoint to services in your own private cloud, which reside behind a, a, a 40 gate firewall. Chris, next slide. So to sum it up, as I mentioned earlier, right? I'm going to reiterate that multifunctional security platform. It's a single device which simplifies your deployment through consolidation. SD-WAN, I mentioned, it's a free feature. Well, my, my company hates me calling it free. Let's call it a, a cost-effective feature on the platform. It's incorporated within the base purchase price of the, of the device. It is a full next generation firewall or, or layer seven firewall is the more accurate term. It does all the advanced routing of what you would find in a traditional routing platform. So we have OSPF, BGP, ISIS, RIP, PIM and so forth. But as I mentioned in the last slide, full zero trust network access. Now, zero trust network access, for those of you who were who are technical, what you may have taken away from my previous slide was that I was talking about split tunneling, and that is not the case, all right? It's split tunneling is the method for uh, splitting traffic based on IP addresses or IP subnets. This is doing it on an application basis. It's looking at an application and saying, well, how do I steer these applications in the most optimal way possible? Chris, next slide. So to sum it up, there's two outcomes here. There's the IT outcome and there's the business outcome. From the IT perspective, it's the ability to dynamically accurately and most importantly securely identify applications and steer them across the most optimal path for that application's level of business criticality. From the company perspective, results in a superior user experience and therefore greater user productivity. Consolidation, I mentioned it earlier, a single device makes life easier. It's less margin for human error. It's easier to manage. It's easier to troubleshoot, which results in increased business uptime and dramatically reduced risk exposure. And then a single pane of glass to operate, to, to configure, deploy, orchestrate, operate, and do analytics on. Results in a complete and utter simplification of the day-to-day -day operations for your IT team which, uh, teams, which directly translates into an overall lower total cost of ownership for your organization because your IT team are not wasting unnecessary CPU cycles trying to navigate multiple management platforms and trying to configure multiple links in a chain. And, and I believe that's it from me, Chris. I think it's back to you. Thank you, Paolo. Um, yeah, and look, that's a great insight to uh, to the world of, of Fortinet. And what I want to do now is bring it to life about what that means to the customers and also how we provide that managed service wraparound that, which allows organizations to maximize their return on investment. Um, so, so this just provides a snapshot of where we're seeing different sectors within the industry and what the benefits they're getting from, from SD-WAN deployment, whether that be cost reduction, um, user experience or the efficiencies that they're gaining by deploying the uh, the SD-WAN solution 
Um, but if we look at it specifically now, we focus on, on one of our customers. So hopefully it will bring together and bring to life the partnership between Fortinet and NASTAR. So uh, Vinci are, are a building a construction company and they've been a, a customer of, uh, of NASTAR's for, for a number of years. And we've provided them with the, the traditional MPLS technology. Um, as an organization, they deliver that service through to the MOD. And the MOD are going through a, a change program and they really want to transform the way that they deliver services, both to their customers and to, to the public. And as part of that, they identified that SD1 solution would enable them to, to be able to do that. But the challenge was, well, what which SD1 solution do they choose? So we worked with Vinci utilizing our, our framework and methodology and collaboration. And we talked to we, we got to understand what the real business drivers were. And we were able to present back to them exactly how NASTAR and Fortinet could deliver against that. And this was in a, a competitive situation. So there were other providers providing other technology solutions and different managed services. But fundamental to this, as you'd expect from the MOD, was about the security element of it. And as Paolo talked about that, that single box, that single box from Fortinet delivered against the security requirements for Vinci and the MOD. Whereas with other solutions, it was about how do you layer on different solutions and then how do you join it up to provide a single single view of that? Well, the Fortinet solution did that. Then overlaid with the NASTAR managed service meant that from an organization, the MOD uh, from the delivery of, of Vinci could actually do everything that they, they wanted as part of their tick list. And by that way, we were chosen as the, the partner of choice and then now utilizing the, the Fortinet solution um, with a, a NASTAR managed service. So it's just a real example of how that brings together. And if we look at what it means from a, a managed service from, from NASTAR, so, so we've got a wealth of uh, experience in delivering managed service, and we've invested heavily as an MSP within our technology for Fortinet. And we operate that via our portal, which gives access to all of our customers in order to, to monitor and manage and use their network in a most effective way. Um, and that's available in a, in a, ver a variety of flavors. And with regard to the, the MOD as an example, th those were slightly different to that. So we have the ability to, to, uh, to, to manage that and to tweak that in a way that suits each organization. But it's not just about the data and it's not just about the portal, it's about what you do with that and how you use that single view to optimise your network. So furthermore, just about the portal and the data, we work with our customers by way of a life cycle management. And what that does is that means that we'll work with our individual customers, we'll help them study the data, understand the data so they maximise the benefits from their solution. So it's not just about giving the customer a handoff with all the data. It's about giving them access to that data, but how they optimize that and how they utilize that data to ensure that their network runs how they want it, but also how it meets the needs and the demands of the customers and their internal employees as well. Look, I hope that's given you a summary about Fortinet and also about NASTAR and how collectively we can support organisations through transformation. So if we're just going to go out to the, the chat now and understand if there's any questions that, that have been asked throughout this presentation. Morning. Yes, we've got a couple of questions in the chat there. Um, so the first one, Paolo, I think this one's probably best answered by you. Um, what about integration into non-Fortinet technologies? Hi, Rebecca. Yeah, great question. So, um, you know, we're very pragmatic at Fortinet. We know that customers have existing equipment, existing, uh, you know, uh, uh, vendors that they work with and other partnerships. So we've actually got a massive, uh, what we call Fabric Alliance Partnership Ecosystem. Um, and if you go onto our website, you will find, um, over 450 alliances and many of them are could be deemed our traditional competitors but again we we know that those platforms are going to exist in customers network 
Um, and both us and the other vendors, you know, came to the decision that it's better that we work together for the benefit of the customer, um, you know, than trying to uh, trying to rule the roost in a, in a sort of a, a one size fits all, um, you know, mantra. I've, I've got another question here for you, Paolo. Um, yeah. Are you the only provider that that offers this consolidated approach? Well. I, I think if you go to other vendors, you know, they will certainly try and convince you that they can do the same thing. But let me answer it like this. Um, and, and I think there is a slide which will be shared with you on the deck. Um, so Gartner is talking about something called mesh architectures, which, you know, where they are talking about the ability to take multiple components and get them to communicate with each other, to share intelligence, to share capabilities and to be able to deliver dynamic network and security services. Now, if you do a bit of research, you'll find that the Fortinet fabric, we first delivered that in around September 2015. Gartner's only started talking about the mesh architectures very, very recently. And again, if you do the research, you'll also find that no other vendor was talking about fabrics or even mesh type architectures, anything close to October 2015, uh, October, that la latter part of 2015. So um, we believe that we are very unique. And I think if customers, you know, just spend some time with us or with our partners like NASTA, um, I think you'll come away with the same conclusion. Thank you. Um, I've got a couple of questions here for you, Chris, um, around um, the Fortinet solution. Is it scalable? Yeah, thank you. So I'm going to teal, steal some of Paolo's thunder here, and I think he alluded to it in one of his slides where he talked about the, the simplification of the single box. And because of that simplification, it means that, that there really is no limit um, to the extent in which that it can be scaled. So from a technology point of view, yeah, absolutely. But furthermore, from how we'd work with the customers is that we'd help and support you in that scalability. So understanding how you wanted to grow your network and how you wanted to introduce further sites, further users, etc. So simply, yeah, it is scalable. And, and that leads quite nicely into another question that we've had around um, how, do, how do we know if Fortinet will work for us? Well, you know, I think one of the questions that was raised earlier is, is, is Fortinet the only solution that, that is a single box? And the, the, the fact is, is that, you know, we'll, we'll work with each organisation and we'll understand what solution works best for them. Um, and if that turns out to be Fortinet, then that, that's absolutely great. But we've just got to be mindful that, you know, there are different flavours of, of SD1. We firmly believe that from a, a security perspective, Fortinet is our number one choice, um, but it's up to us to work with the customers to make sure that that is the right cho choice for them based upon what they're looking to achieve and the transformation journey which they're going on. Um, I've got one last question that's come in. Um, how, how does the reporting and analytics um, translate into savings? Yeah, so uh, on, on that basis, if we, if we look at some of the slides that, that we presented there, it basically says that the that the fact is that you've got this single view from a portal and therefore you can get a raft of analytics. That Those analytics are, are real time data. So what it allows you to do is to adapt the way that your network operates, provide you with the efficiency. So, you know, as an example for some of our customers, you know, particularly around the world of, of hybrid working, you know, it's making sure that they can, uh, that their network is, is, is operating at full performance so their employees can work anywhere. And that's having massive efficiency savings for them in the way that they, they deal with, with customers. And also it's having further savings on things like the um, uh, like estates, et cetera, where they can look to reduce footprints. So there are a number of tangible benefits that can be dealt with, but it's really, really important that you've got that single view of the data and you can access it at any time. That's all the questions that I have, Chris. Thank you. Brilliant. Well, look. Thank you everybody for, for joining us this morning. Um, the questions and the deck will be distributed to everybody and it will be available via other methods of social media. 
Paolo, thank you for your time this morning. It, it was great to understand more about the, uh, the, the Fortinet solution. Thank you for having me. That's brilliant. Well, look, thank you, everybody. Uh, I'll speak to you soon. Cheers now. Yes. Bye. Bye-bye.